हेलो या गुड मॉर्निंग या गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सो शीतल सुमन हम लोग ऑल आर रेडी फिर ऑल कैन स्टार्ट नाउ यस सर Yeah, please start. You can. Hello. Uh, Suman, your voice is not clear. You can't hear only. Uh, now, sir, it's audible now, sir. Yes, we can hear. Uh, it's better. Yeah. Oh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to virtual word round presentation. Today's topic is locally advanced uh, non-small cell lung carcinoma. I am Dr. Shuman, and uh, other than me, Dr. Mahdi, Dr. Sheetal, and Dr. Atul, uh, we are presenting all together. So our case, uh, it's a 56-year-old gentleman from West Bengal. Uh, he is a clerk in a revenue office. He presented with chief complaints of fever since three months, along with loss of appetite and uh, weight loss since the last two months. The patient was apparently well till December 2020 when he develops these symptoms uh, initially with fever, and this fever was intermittent type, not associated with any change or. Right. Not associated with chills or rigor, and no particular time specificity was noted in the type uh, in the uh, fever. Temperature uh, temperature was not charted, so we don't have the uh, TMAX for this fever. Weight loss was not documented, but subjective loosening of clothes were present. 
on uh, other histories there was no history of cough there is no history of burning situation loose to pain abdomen any joint pain or rash over body there is no history of any difficulty in breathing uh, at rest or at exertion there is no history of any change or hoarseness of voice no history of any hemoptysis chest full pain the patient did not uh, take any uh, chronic medications like uh, steroids he had a history of pulmonary uh, tuberculosis 30 years back for which he received injectable ATTs and tubercular uh, therapy for three to four months at home. Although we don't have no details, uh, apparently this ATT was stopped by physician, uh, physician itself. He is also a known hypertension since last five years on irregular medications. There is no history of any hospital admission or any major or minor surgery. There is no history of any episode of shortness of breath. So on personal history, he is a known uh, chronic beery smoker for uh, 30 years, one uh, pack per day, which makes it 30 pack years. Uh, uh, he is reformed since last six months. He takes meals diet uh, with the decreased appetite since last three months. Uh, sleep, blood, and bowel habits are normal and adequate. There is no known drug allergy. There is no family history of any malignancy. Uh, he belongs to social, uh, uh, he belongs to lower middle economic, socioeconomic status and lives in a pakka house with inbuilt sanitation facilities with uh, municipal corporation water supply. On general examination, after uh, explaining all the procedures and taking verbal consent in a well lit room under full privacy, the examination was done. He was uh, conscious, well oriented to the time place person on build. He was a thin build and uh, malnourishment was present. Uh, GC was good, uh, KPS was 80, modest effort tolerance of three floors. Uh, on uh, basic vitals, it was all normal. On a further general examination, it was noted that parrot is present, clubbing is there with grade two, there is no edema, ictera, cyanosis, any uh, enlarged lymph node or any beta edema. There was no skeletal tenderness as well. On for the system examination, the chest wall movement was symmetric with equal expansion bilaterally. There was no palpable supraclavicular lymph node. There is no uh, abnormal percussion uh, finding was noted. It was normal resonant uh, sound all over the chest walls. On auscultation, there was decreased uh, breath sound noted in the left upper zone. Uh, on cardiac examination, it was all normal, normal heart rate with regular lenum and, and no abnormal heart sound was noted. Or abdominally, it was soft and non tender. So he was further evaluated with basic lab investigations where hemoglobin was found to be 9.1. Other uh, CBC parameters were normal. Uh, CRP was mildly elevated 10.32. Viral markers, uh, liver function, and uh, uh, renal function tests were normal. Uh, on specific uh, examination from sputum, Zittenstein, and uh, Zine expert. Uh, Test it was all negative, sputum culture and all other culture test revealed no growth of any examination uh, on any organi organism. COVID artificial are antibodies are negative as well. So he further evaluated with imaging. So on digital chest x ray, there was a round uh, homogeneous opacity noted in the left upper zone in the suprahyalar region. With which was uh, reported as possibility of focal rounded consolidation or a uh, lung mass. There was slight diffuse haziness uh, found in bilateral epical segments as well. On USC whole abdomen, there was bilateral renal cortical cyst. On CCT thorax, there was a large 6.4 into 5 centimeter mildly enhancing well defined soft density lesion with speculated margin uh, in the left upper lobe and left hilar region was noted which was infiltrating the mediastinal structures, increasing the major uh, vessels like arch of aorta and descending thoracic aorta and left main pulmonary uh, artery. And it was suggestive of neoplastic growth. Uh, bilateral upper lobe showed a uh, fibrous scar, probably due to uh, the, the previous TB, uh, tuberculosis sequelae. There was multiple enlarged uh, node in uh, in the mediastinal group, like the prevascular node, the lower paratracheal nodes, the cyabiotic node was fine, found, and bilateral hilar nodes as well. And uh, mind lift uh, plural effusion was noted, and uh, the 
bilateral renal cortical cyst was also noted in the uh, CCT uh, uh, thoracic abdomen. On further investigation on FDG PET CT, there was a peripherally FDG avid centrally necrotic uh, mass of 6.6 into 5.7 into 6.6 centimeter with high SUV value in left, left suprahedral region, completely encasing the left main pulmonary artery, abutting the arch of aorta and infiltrating the mediastinum, along with conglomerated left hilar nodes. Consolidatory changes was noted in the left upper left uh, uh, lung upper lobe. There was FDG avid prevascular, FDG avid prevascular uh, AP window and left lower paratracheal node was noted. So uh, this is the prevascular node, this is the uh, AP window or subarctic node, and this is the left paratracheal node. The uh, right paratracheal node was deemed uh, non-metastatic in the uh, FDG paid CD report. MRI brain revealed no neuroparenchymal metastasis. So uh, he was investigated uh, uh, further for uh, biopsy procedures. He was guided bronchial biopsy was done while no malignant scenes can, uh, can be found. On CT guided left lung biopsy, uh, it was revealed poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. On uh, IHC staining, it was P14 CK7 positive and TTF1 or HEPAR1 negative. On EVAS guided FNAC, the four R, which is the contralateral lower paratracheal node, was found to be have uh, a metastatic poorly differentiated carcinoma. And uh, four L and eleven R was found reactive. Further functional investigations was done where mild obstruction and restriction without any bronchodilator reversibility uh, found. Uh, it's uh, pretty good uh, FV1 and FBC and DLC value. Uh, especially with respect to the long smoking history and 2D covers also uh, is fine with ejection fraction of uh, 65 uh, 65 percent. So it was finally diagnosed as left uh, CA left lung CT4 in view of inhibition of mediastinum and red vessels uh, N3 in view of contralateral mediastinum nodal involvement, which is the right lower paratracheal four, which is positive in AWAS guided FNAC and um, stage 3C. And it was deemed undetectable at, at the point of diagnosis as well. So the treatment plan for him is radical CTRT, uh, where concurrent paclitaxel and carboplatin with a dose of 45 uh, milligram per meter square of pacli and uh, carboplatin of area under about two, one, uh, say, week, along with uh, external beam radiotherapy to a dose of 60 gray in 30 fraction, two gray per fraction, five days a week over six weeks with 6 MB photon PMAT technique with CBCT image guidance was planned. So uh, the patient was simulated after confirmation of his identity and written uh, consent and ensuring there is no history of contact, uh, contrast energy and uh, four hours of fasting status. He was kept in eight for supine arms overhead in a standard metric board. The entry, exit and chin position distance were noted. 2.5 mm CCD cars from prepared to mid abdomen were taken, and he was ob observed thereafter for 30 minutes for any development of any contrast induced uh, reactions. So, contouring was done uh, in the planning CT scan. So, the GTV uh, for the gross tumor volume uh, primary uh, contouring lung window settings was used with. Uh, with of uh, 1600 and uh, lower of 600 and CTVP, uh, CTV primary was generated by five millimeter isotopic margin around the GTV and manual after uh, thereafter manually edited for accounting for the surrounding anatomy like natural barriers of bone or heart. So uh, we can see in this image that in normal mediastinal window we would miss some uh, GTV primary where uh, in the long windows uh, settings, we would be able to appreciate the GTV primary uh, completely. Uh, for contouring of primary, we had co-registered the planning city with the FDG paid city done uh, at the uh, primary index uh, settings. Uh, incorporation of paid city data uh, taken uh, accounted in the areas of atelectasis and consolidation. So where here you can see all this area, uh, they are almost similar to this uh, area, but there is this FDG update here and here and, and this all this uh, area were taken into GTB primary and subsequently 
5 mm isotopic by 5 mm isotopic margin the ctb primary was generated and it was edited from uh, the bone the and the midline structures and uh, it's similarly it's a symmetrical uh, image in the coronal and sagittal view with fused fgt uh, fdg pad and the planning city for a contouring of nodal volume, mediastinal preset window was uh, used for the GTV end, and all the enlarged nodes were contoured at the GTV end. This for CTV uh, nodal volume, we had included this uh, whole nodal station of the pathologically affected limb node, including five millimeter of isotopic margin around the GTV node. And uh, it is also uh, manually again edited from uh, the large vessels or any other uh, midline mediastinal uh, structures. Uh, no elective nodal irradiation uh, uh, was done as per, uh, uh, as per the guideline. So you can see in the 95% isodose in after the plan, 95% isodose was covering all the uh, uh, the PTV. Which is what here. kind of planning is this? Is it 3D CRT, VMAT? What kind of plan is this? You mentioned that. Uh, VMAT, sir. No, he has mentioned. You mentioned that okay. So, um, the 95 percent uh, dose coverage was uh, ensured in the planning, uh, um, in the whole PTV, and this is the uh, corresponding 5 uh, 50 percent isodose uh, of this uh, of the plan where you can see we have uh, tried to avoid in the lower part the heart and the spinal part area so the oer dose parameters were uh, evaluated from the dvh so the main lung, lung dose was around 14.5 gray and the v20 was 21.7 percent the v5 lung uh, uh, was 54.5 percent we should note that this all lung dose is the combined lung which is the bilateral lung uh, combined lung dose not the ipsilateral or contractor down uh, individually. The esophagus max dose was 105.2%. The spinal cord D-max was 39.8. Mean heart dose was 7 gray and heart V25 was 9.3%. Uh, 9 uh, heart dose did not uh, go beyond uh, uh, 45 or 60 gray. So we have not mentioned uh, here, 45 or 360. So, uh, after this patient was uh, started on uh, uh, EBRT along with concurrent uh, practices uh, for uh, platinum. So before you get into the uh, discussion, uh, anyone consultant from thoracic unit is there today? No? Okay. So in terms of history and examination before you do a, a CT or a PET CT, uh, what are the points which will indicate that this is a locally advanced lung cancer or maybe metastatic uh, lung cancer? So in history, what are the findings and um, examination? So uh, sir, in history, although in this case, there was no uh, history uh, other than the constitutional... Uh, 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 any uh, chest pain uh, which is along with the... Uh, kind of the pruritic chest pain would uh, uh, would uh, uh, probably from the parietal pleural involvement any hoarseness of voice would be probably uh, from involvement of uh, okay. recurrent okay. now would okay. make it okay. uh, other than okay. Okay. your voice gets uh, slowly slowly hello sir yeah. Uh, yes. So any hoarseness of voice uh, would be uh, from as you, uh, presumably from recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement. T three chest pain uh, like pleuritic chest pain uh, would be from parietal pleural involvement. Uh, which would be from T uh, uh, stage at uh, T three again. Then uh, shortness of breath. If we can. On examination, we can assess that it from uh, plural effusion or uh, uh, pericardial effusion or uh, this kind of thing. Then it would make it as again uh, uh, probably a T4. Then uh, uh, other than that, uh, the metastatic symptoms would be uh, like. Uh, oh, that or, 
else? So you said pain in the chest. Where else a patient can have pain um, or any other symptom, local symptom? Patient can have backache, mid thoracic, interscapular pain. Yes, sir. Uh, like whenever it involves the uh, like from local staging as per se, whenever it involves the uh, chest wall and uh, the chest wall uh, yeah. neurovascular yeah. structure. Horner syndrome. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. I'll go into the, all this uh, Horner syndrome for the superior sulcus uh, tumors and what uh, we'll go uh, over through the discussions. Patient with features of SVCO. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, just rattle out quickly just before even doing the uh, PET CT. Okay. That this patient has at least the advanced disease, if not metastatic. Yes. Patient have significant weight loss and lung cancer. Very unlikely that ninety percent of Dr. Haridas Nair, <laughs> mute yourself, please, Dr. Nair. Haridas Nair, mute you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, and does paraneoplastic syndromes, if someone has a paraneoplastic syndrome, uh, does what does that mean? Does it have any correlation with stage or no correlation or a weak correlation or a strong correlation? Um, for paraneoplastic syndrome, uh, it does not. So it, it, it would be rather uh, correlates with the histology uh, of the tumors rather than the uh, local or staging. So, so it's uh, in a small cell. Uh, we see all these um, like SIDH postings or uh, all these paraneoplastic syndromes in squamous or uh, you know hypercalcemia is one of the or even SIDH is also uh, one of the common uh, paraneoplastic syndrome uh, seen in uh, in SCLCs. So uh, you are right. Uh, it is uh, uh, more related to stage, uh, no more related to the histology, but. Very early stage, you are unlikely to have a you know pronounced paraneoplastic syndrome. Okay, because it's also related to the what is the cause of uh, paraneoplastic syndrome? If you have to write a short note on paraneoplastic syndrome in lung cancer, what will you write? So, uh, it would be said uh, the the tumor itself would uh, would uh, secrete uh, like several proteins. Related, which would be related to uh, the different paraneoplastic syndromes, like in hypercalcemia, it will be the PT uh, parathormone uh, related peptide, uh, yes. like uh, all these things. Yeah. So, you know, for it to release the tumor bulk also matters. So, the tumor bulk, uh, if the tumor bulk is less, then there will be less of these uh, uh, proteins that will be secreted, chemokines and proteins. So, it's so it is both the histological type. And with the same histological type, not everyone will have that paraneoplastic syndrome. Okay. Carry on. So uh, now coming to discussion. Oh, just one second. Uh, you showed uh, in this patient uh, that you used uh, PET CT findings to differentiate between uh, tumor spread and atelectasis of consolidation. So yes, what in, I think it's a question uh, at there are three levels. The Sheetal is there. What if, suppose in your center, PET CT was not available or it has sort of conked off and you cannot do PET CT. Patient cannot, uh, uh, has to go to another city for a PET CT. So what will you do in such situation if PET CT is not available? Uh, we'll use lung window for contouring, sir, in such setting. Lung window for contouring, that is one thing. Obviously, that is the obvious thing. You will use, what else? So in lung window, you can always differentiate between uh, consolidation and tumor involvement. And, you know, otherwise... Sir, according to the guidelines, sir, uh, whenever paid CD is not available, so we don't know what is the metabolic volume the tumor is, mm -hmm. we have to take uh, three... After the solid uh, portion, which is contrast enhancing in the CCD 
then we have to take three centimeter of the atherectatic region. Uh, that is the um, uh, previous guidance said in order to like balance between uh, like not missing any microscopic tumor around the uh, uh, around the whatever tumor solid tumor we seeing and also not taking the whole atherectatic region. Uh, which would make the CTV uh, uh, very large uh, yeah. and uh, like probably uh, yeah. result in a asymmetric. Guidance from the diagnostic radiologist on the diagnostic imaging, so they might be able to help you in such cases because they routinely see such things. Yes, sir. Uh, Anil, would you like to add anything to this point? <laughs> what do you do? Anil? Yes, sir. Uh, if you do not have the PET CD, so um, it's not very easy to differentiate between a collapsed lung and the tumor whenever the tumor is very large. Mm -hmm. If the tumor is small and it is obstructing the main bronchus or something, then you can easily differentiate because the collapsed volume will be very, so will be very homogeneous and you can easily see the vasculature and the air bronchogram within the collapsed structure. And the collapse will have a very sharp and smooth margin as compared to the lung mass. So, uh, so by this, that is sort of small, minor finding, we can, yeah, but not very easily, but we can differentiate between a collapse part of the lung as well as the lung mass. It just depends upon your experience, how many cases you have seen and contoured. With your experience, you can easily differentiate between a collapse part of the lung as well as the lung mass. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I think you all can carry on now. We have half an hour for discussion now. So we have... Is the case will discussion uh, now coming to discussion now starting with the epidemiology so uh, uh, in globe book and 2018 it was worldwide lung cancer was the leading cause of cancer incidence and mortality uh, where in 2020 it has become the second leading cause after breast tear and remains the leading cause of cancer related mortality is the fourth mo most common uh, cause of incidence and mortality in cancer patients in india state wise mizoram has the highest uh, cases of lungs here on Baden. So now uh, just to uh, uh, talk about the clinical presentation, so local disease, central tumors have uh, normally presents with half with hemoptysis due to uh, invasion of vessels or any rupture of tumor vasculatures, uh, then fever, productive cough. Peripheral tumors can present without any symptoms or uh, they can have like a cough and chronic chest pain. Other than that, uh, hoarseness of voice, which uh, generally uh, denotes um, recurrent adhesion of uh, involvement or dysphagia, which can be uh, from enlarged node or the enlarged mass uh, pushing into the esophagus, uh, aspiration due to any uh, like fistula formation, the constitutional symptoms like weight loss, weakness, loss of appetite, and low grade fever which is uh, uh, the whole thing is denoted with anorexia gastric syndrome. Uh, superior venicopa syndrome uh, is more common in uh, small cell lung cancer, uh, so uh, which is due to the invasion of the extrinsic uh, completion of the extrinsic veins. Uh, then Panko syndrome or Harner syndrome was common histology and presence with lower regular pixels and uh, shoulder pain. So uh, to to uh, work up according to the uh, IACLC uh, guidelines, so step one would be history examination, then chest X ray, and basic blood investigation. The step two would be further imaging with CCT of thorax and upper abdomen and FDG pet CT and uh, fiber optic bronchoscopy. And step three would be uh, invasive modalities of histology like CT guided biopsy or US guided FNC. Pre treatment workup uh, should include uh, PFT testing with uh, DLCO for every patient uh, of radical settings. And uh, if the PFT is revealed borderline pulmonary reserve or any discordance with the history and PFT uh, values, then uh, we'd need a VQ scan. A resting uh, or stress to the UCO also would be needed uh, for. So go back to the. So how do they complement each other? Uh, sir, I would come to the okay. So uh, CCT, uh, thorax and abdomen, uh, they should must include 
the liver and bilateral adrenal glands. So, um, regarding mediastinal lymph node involvement in the CCT uh, uh, imaging, so even less than one centimeter of mediastinal lymph node uh, as deemed uh, uh, metastatic in 45% of patients, where more than 1.5 centimeter of node was found to be benign in 20% of patients. In generally, lymph node more than uh, one centimeter with uh, contrast enhancement with any extracapsular involvement and any necrotic core would be deemed uh, metastatic in a CACD scan. But further, FDG PET CT uh, is used in, uh, in order to distinguish the tumor from the atelectatic at region for better detection of lymph node uh, and distal match with respect to CACD. So you can see in, for mediastinal node, uh, the PET-CT has superior sensitivity and specificity uh, from the CACD. Uh, इंडियन बैंक or small lymph node less than 1 cm with uh, has the um, now to me ask ni le ami kal jabo duparna ghosh please mute yourself it has significant role in rt planning uh, as we already showed and would be discussed further and it also has a role in response evaluation uh, like uh, how the patient uh, responded to the definitive uh, treatment where the surgical modality was not uh, was not used like uh, then uh, the impact of pet in a uh, further discussion about impact of pet is uh, like P in rt planning so ptv is increased in 64% of patients in, as it detected uh, and in the nodal station better with respect to the cct it also decreased the ptv in 36% patient uh, uh, with the exclusion of atelectatic uh, results so in general ptv uh, reduction ptv volume reduces by 29 uh, around 29% in this paper uh, van witsen uh, uh, when the whole thing is uh, considered like the uh, detected nodal volume increases and the atelectatic uh, region decreases and average reduction of v20 round volume by almost 27% and also inter observer variability was reduced when pet ct was uh, used along with cc planning ct in rt planning we, we also should uh, note that there are some limitation uh, limitation factor of pet like it has a uh, lesser resolution uh, which also depends on the scanner in the institutional uh, pet ct uh, uh, algorithms along with that is has registration error issues uh, especially when the pet ct has been done in a uh, non flat couch and non treatment planning position and also the suv value uh, the to be de um, determination for the contouring of gtv it, it has to be individually determined and there would be some uh, inter observer variability uh, would be anyway it will come now role of mri in a lung cancer patient is uh, quite uh, limited in terms of rt planning although we have to do mandatory brain imaging in stage 3 4 before radical treatment in every patients any patients with uh, suspicious or involved brain mets in a ct scan like pet ct scan would be further evaluated uh, has to be further evaluated by mri brain uh, brain plus contrast scan at least the pan post tumor and indeterminate adjacent lesions uh, would be further evaluated better in a mri scan now coming to the uh, mediastinal nodal sampling procedure so mediastinoscopy is the gold standard procedure where at suprasternal notch uh, a rigid uh, metal tube is inserted anterior to trachea and it uh, is from the level 2 level 4 and level 7 station would come to the uh, nomenclature of station uh, after few slides now uh, for level station 5 and 6 chamberlin procedure or left median sternotomy 
uh, is normally done when incision at the second third intercostal space is uh, and left to sternum is uh, uh, in, 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 in uh, after incision we insert the mitral tube and get samples from the station five and six trans bronchial uh, needle aspiration either by uh, endobronchial ultrasounded guide or esophageal uh, uh, ultrasound guide can be done. Endobronchial uh, ultrasound guide uh, uh, TBNA can uh, detect lymph node and get samples from the lymph node around the central airway and usually gets sample from the station 2, 4, 7 and 10 to 12, where the uh, esophageal USG guide TBNA gets sample from the uh, 3P, which is uh, uh, retrotracheal, the uh, 4L789 stations. So, when we have to do this. Go back. Go back. So, you have drawn this or you have taken it from somewhere? No, sir. I made this slide, but I have taken this photo. From? But this slide, so I have made this slide. Okay, you have made this slide. Very nice uh, slide, but if you have taken photos from somewhere, you should acknowledge that someone who's drawn the so of course you have done good justice to this photograph. You have written nicely, but it's always a good practice to acknowledge uh, if you have taken someone, you know, because these diagrams are also very simple and uh, illustrative. Okay, thank you. Next. So, uh, yes. So addressing the uh, regarding addressing the nodes, so when to do this mediastinal nodal sampling? So it is indicated in all patients with potentially operable uh, NSCLC. So uh, the ESTS guideline uh, says that it can be avoided only in patients of peripherally uh, located tumor with T1 staging, which is less than three centimeter, uh, and uh, like lower FDG values in adenocarcinoma. So in PET CD. Uh, uh, paid CD, uh, FDG paid CD says there is no uh, uptake in the medial strain in and the patient is CN0, peripherally located tumor and laser 3 centimeter, the patient can directly go ahead with surgery. But if the patient has a hilar node, which is uh, CN1 or any uh, uh, lung parenchymal node or it's centrally located or 3 centimeter or larger or adeno CA with high FDG value, uh, in, before surgery, the patient has to go, uh, go ahead with uh, nodal sampling by EBUS or US or video assisted uh, media stenoscopy. Any PET CT positive patient with uh, uh, FDG avid media stenal node has to go ahead with uh, media stenal sampling. Uh, if we go ahead with EBUS and EBS first and the lymph node comes negative in a PET CT positive patient, we have to go ahead with media stenoscopy. And the minimum yield in mediastinal sampling uh, is two epsilonated nodal sampling has to be there, one concentrated nodal sampling has to be there, and station seven, which is subcarinal level sampling, has to be uh, there in order to get a satisfactory mediastinal sampling. So, uh, what to do? So, we have the options we have seen, like uh, mediastinoscopy, which is a uh, invasive procedure and requires anesthesia. Uh, versus the uh, transbunctional needle aspiration with uh, ultrasound guidance, which is a, a minor OT procedure. So, uh, in a, a randomized trial by Anima et al. published in JAMA Oncology in 2010, showed that uh, EVAS guided FNAC can avoid, the, the, they basically randomized between media stenoscopy versus EVAS and EVAS guided FNAC, followed by surgical staging if no nodal metastasis were found in the EBUS or US FNC. So uh, they found like we can, uh, the sensitivity and negative protective uh, predictive value is higher with EBUS in US FNC followed by surgical staging uh, with compared to surgical staging only. And it would reduce uh, the need for uh, invasive medial stenoscopy in about 47% and more than 50% of futile thoracotomies where the patient had found to, uh, were found to have contralateral uh, 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 mediastinal node, which is N3 and multistation N2 uh, that can be avoided by uh, EBUS or FNAC first, uh, then surgical staging. This is so jump. coming to the different jump. nodal stages. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, can sir. I interrupt you? Yeah. yeah. Yes, so, so you are... Uh, you, you are only telling only one of the trials that the Anima et al. and JAMA 2010. 
still the gold standard currently worldwide is to do the e bus and e bus still have got a 10 to 15% of false negative rate so you can't avoid the media stenoscopy as at present so still the data is evolving so whenever you do the e bus or e us you still have to do the media stenoscopy it depends upon institution to institution also currently but the world or the gold standard currently is e bus followed by confirmation by media stenoscopy and then to do the thoracotomy or the surgical capillary section yes okay so uh, coming to the medicine and nodal station so uh, it can be divided in four groups like so, the high medicinal the superior medicinal the aortic the inferior medicinal and the n1 nodes so the high medicinal is uh, the superior region which is deemed as uh, which is noted as station 1 uh, then the uh, superior medicinal is to r to l which is upper paratracheal groups the 3p is the prevascular group uh, sorry 3 a is the prevascular for uh, r l uh, r l is the more practical group so r is right and a is left basically so uh, then the aortic groups are uh, sta the uh, station 5 is subaortic or ap window uh, group between the uh, arch of aorta and uh, main pulmonary artery and uh, the station 6 is paraortic group which lies just above the station 5 uh, then inferior medial is level 7 which is subclavian group and uh, level 8 the esophageal and level 9 pulmonary uh, ligament group and the n1 are hilar the interlobal is 11 lobal 12 13 segmental and the 14 the station 14 is subsegmental which are the uh, uh, n1 uh, group uh, note according to the disease study statement. so uh, according to HCC 2018, tumor less than 2 cm uh, is T1A, tumor between 2 to 3 cm uh, is T, uh, T1B, uh, then uh, T2A is 3 to 5 cm with invasion of visceral pleura or involvement of main bronchus, this, uh, 2 cm or more distal to carina is T2A. Uh, then T2B is 5 to 7 cm without other T2 descriptor, which is the invasion of uh, uh, visceral pleura or the main bunkers. So uh, then T3 is more, tumor more than 7 centimeter involvement of phrenic nerve or parietal uh, pericardium or uh, uh, chestral invasion or invasion of parietal uh, Suman, Suman, wait, 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 wait. Yes, sir. Uh, Suman, are you telling the AGCC 7th or 8th? 8th, sir. Nah, this is not 8th, beta. The T3 tumor, uh, previously T3 was more than 7 centimeter, but they have again changed it to T2 to less than 5 centimeter. Isn't it? 5 to 7 centimeter. Yeah, so T3 is more than 5, but less than 7 centimeter in AJC 8 staging. So you have taken the photograph from the Previous AJC is staging. Okay. Sorry, sir. Ah, so you should correct that. So T2 is tumor more than 3 centimeter, but less than or equal to 5 centimeter. T3 more than 5, 5 centimeter, but less than or equal to 7 centimeter. Anything which is more than 7 centimeter is classified as T4. And then you can have the other criteria that the tumor is involved in the left main bronchus. And the atelectasis, if it is involved up to the high lust, then it is T2. Okay. And if it is yes. the complete collapse of the lung, then it's T3. Okay. Yes, okay. So, invasion of any medicinal structures like SVC or. Uh, uh, ah, any invasion, uh, invasion of any medicinal structures like SVC, medicinum, heart, or esophagus is uh, T4. And uh, any. Uh, nodule in ipsilateral lobe is ipsilateral lung other than the involved mean uh, lobe no, no 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 just wait just wait just wait just wait yeah but yeah t3 is any tumor nodule or you have nodule in the lung in the ipsilateral lobe yes sir. in the ipsilateral lobe yes, sir. in the different lobe of the same lung is t4 yes, sir. contralateral lung yes, sir. is m1 okay yes, sir. Yes, sir. so i, I 
so what i would suggest you don't read this paragraph or you don't read this slide but let the audience read the staging tnm staging on their own because this slide is not correct okay sir uh, the size criteria is wrong sir but uh, it's t4 it's sir uh, yeah contralateral lung nodule is m1 is yes, not t4 the, the equilateral nodule only equilateral nodule in the different look that is t4 sir. In here. Carry on. Yeah. So N one is uh, metastatic ipsilateral interpulmonary or higher uh, or periglottal lymph node in who is interpulmonary mediastinum or subcarinal lymph node. Uh, and and then three is. Changing uh, 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 yeah. details, we'll have the more of discussion. You can uh, skip this slide. Everyone knows this, and those cannot read. Okay. Stage group. Uh, so uh, this is the stage group again. I'll skip this. And uh, stage three, basically, uh, stage three A, three B, three C, which comprises a heterogeneous group. Uh, which can see we can see over this uh, table. Uh, which is different uh, median survival of like twenty nine months in three A, nineteen months in three B, and twelve point five uh, in three C. So it's a heterogeneous group. So uh, treatment strategy in each after. You should also say from where it is because it will depend upon the cohort also on how they are treated. Okay, it's all right. Carry on. So, ah, uh, so regarding treatment strategy, first multidisciplinary approach should be taken for all all advanced stage, uh, local advanced stage, ah, uh, NSCLC after functional evaluation, imaging, medicinal something, and discussion with the uh, thoracic surgeon regarding technical and oncological dissectability. So, dissectable or potentially dissectable ah uh, NSCLC can be treated with this following ah uh, approaches, and undissectable ah uh, can be ah uh, treated with component CTRT or Uh, NSCT followed by CTRT or RTL, and we we discuss uh, and the later. So uh, coming to the resectable first. So after if the patient undergoes surgery, adjuvant chemo is standard of care. Uh, after this less meta analysis, where uh, uh, in stage two and stage three, uh, better hazard ratio are found with adjuvant chemo. So uh, for new adjuvant chemo, there is evidence. Uh, From this uh, meta-analysis, NS uh, NSCLC meta-analysis co uh, collaborative group, where uh, they uh, shown in uh, various trial compromising of cisplatin based regimen, there is five absolute benefit of in five year overall survival around five percent, and the benefit maintained in one B to three year stage. So, new adjuvant chemotherapy strategy usually is taken in three A to Uh, in uh, three uh, ED, uh, tumors with bulky mediastinal node or bulky uh, primary, the rationale of uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy also remains in order to treat the micrometastatic disease. So, uh, comparing new adjuvant versus uh, adjuvant chemotherapy, this is study by Spanish Duncanson group in Nash trial, where uh, three cycles of actinic carbo used preoperatively and postoperatively and compared, although there was no. Uh, uh, um, statistically significant difference in disease free survival the pre op chemotherapy arm uh, started and completed uh, the, there were better uh, completion and start of the planned chemo whereas the adjuvant arm there was uh, uh, the planned chemotherapy was received by lesser patient so uh, in from the style like uh, the new adjuvant uh, chemotherapy uh, the approach is uh, taken uh, more popularly in Patients with resectable or potentially resectable uh, NSCLC. So there is no benefit benefit of addition to radiotherapy to uh, NSCT, which is found in this uh, S S A double K sixteen phase three trial. Uh, all, and there are also uh, two other uh, trials uh, which showed no benefit to uh, addition of NSCT uh, in the new adjuvant uh, modality. Although superior surface tumor are special case, and there are st uh, study where new adjuvant chemo RT followed by surgical resection uh, to a dose of 45 gray concurrently with two uh, cycles of six uh, etoposide uh, resulted in excellent of uh, two years survival of five percent and five years survival over a survival of 44 percent, which is way uh, above than the uh, historical uh, historical uh, data in uh, C3 and C3. Now I'm uh, coming to uh, the Alvin trial, uh, INT zero one two nine trial, where they had a randomized patient 
between uh, new adjuvant CTRT followed by surgery versus uh, definitive CTRT. So they had given two cycles of CC side with 45 gray EVRT followed by surgery versus the continuation of EVRT to 61 gray. So uh, there was no difference in the median overall survival, but the PFS was better with surgery. So, and in the subgroup analysis, they had seen OS was better when the patient underwent lobectomy. So this, the blue line is CTRT and green line, sorry, the blue line is CTRT followed by surgery and the green line is CTRT only. So the lobectomy group, there was significant difference in OS uh, in subgroup analysis between the surgery and RT group. But when the patient underwent pneumonectomy, the CTRT group did better in terms of oncological outcome. So the uh, our conclusion from this study is when patients require a pneumonectomy, it's better to go ahead with definitive CTRT, even if the patient is resectable. So coming to post-operative RT is only indicated, uh, clear indication is margin positive patients. Uh, and there's the port analysis where uh, there is an adverse effect of uh, post-operative radiotherapy on overall survival. And, um, and the sub, on the subgroup analysis, the highest detriment was seen in stage 1, 2, and in 0, in zero in one patients. And the, it's, a, it's an old study with no control in the RT arm with large volume and large dose in uh, older technique in COBOL-60 uh, machines. And uh, the patient population was also uh, not suitable to uh, 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 receive uh, uh, port only. So there is a quite uh, controversy regarding uh, doubt regarding the port and indications of port regarding uh, uh, scenarios other than the margin uh, positive. The subsequent observational studies has found a uh, value of port in uh, uh, into diseases like the ANITA trial post analysis. Uh, they were seen improved survival in uh, PN1. Uh, group and in the CR database, there was improved survival in the N2 disease. So now uh, the European lung R trial uh, has conducted uh, randomized control trial uh, of port in N2 diseases, 54 gain, 30, 30 fraction, and its uh, result has come in abstract uh, view where the uh, rate of mediastinal relapse has uh, reduced with the uh, port, but the DFS and OS was. Uh, was not benefited with port. So we still don't uh, know regarding the use of port in intro diseases. So in to summarize resectable stage three, so based on randomized data outcome are similar in local treatment uh, where the surgical approaches or radiotherapy uh, uh, based approaches. And we can see in all these recommendations of ACCP or SCTS or SMO or NCCN, they have uh, recommended definitive CTRT or induction chemotherapy followed by surgery uh, like equally. There is no uh, preference to surgery or uh, uh, CTRT. So in very few selected cases where stage three year tumor can be completely dissected, patients should undergo surgery first with lobectomy and medicinal immunodissection followed by argument therapy other than patient should uh, undergo induction chemotherapy followed by surgery in a uh, potentially or uh, completely resectable uh, NSCLC. Now coming to undisectable stage tumor, generally it is denoted by tumor, uh, T4, tumor invading immediastinum or N3 diseases or bulky or multistation N2 diseases and medically inoperable patients. So there are uh, studies between RT versus, uh, CTRT versus RT alone and earlier the studies were sequential chemo RT versus RT and it was seen that uh, chemo, addition of chemotherapy along with RT uh, has improved oncological outcome. Now in undisectable NSCLC, the standard RT dose has derived from uh, the study by Perez et al. in 1986 by RTOG 7301 uh, release where the continuous uh, two gray for fraction uh, uh, delivery of 60 gray EBRT resulted in better response with respect to 40 and 50 and even uh, split uh, dose fractionation. Optimal RT dose has further uh, 
been evaluated in landmark RTOG 0617 trial by Dr. Bradley, where uh, uh, he had, uh, randomized, uh, uh, it was a two into two bacterial uh, randomized control trial between uh, standard dose 60 gray versus high dose uh, 74 gray EBRT along with uh, plus minus cetuximab. And it was based on uh, Dr. Bradley's previous uh, phase two trial. But unfortunately, the higher RT dose arm uh, resulted in poorer waste, poorer uh, PFAs, higher local and regional and distal failure, along with higher uh, local toxicity. So uh, the factor predictive of overall survival in this study was radiation dose of 60 gray, maximum SYJ is uh, great, PTV size, and V5 and V30 hard dose. So it was uh, 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 like um, uh, uh, we have assumed that this higher cardiac and lung doses, the prolonged treatment time in the 74 gray uh, 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 arm where treatment was uh, occurred over 7.5 weeks, the unreported treatment related death due to high uh, heart doses was called uh, the factors behind this uh, poor outcome in the high RT dose. So standard of care now in RT technique is uh, intensity modulated radiotherapy as uh, uh, the subgroup analysis, the secondary analysis from the RTOG 617 has shown there is a low grade, uh, low rate of grade pneumonitis, lower heart dose, and uh, the heart dose are independent predictor of survival. And there are another, other uh, various dosimetric analysis showing the uh, better lung esophagus and heart doses with animality uh, with respect to GDCRT. Along with that, there are few limitations with diamante, like there will be increased V5 uh, lung dose uh, resulting in a low dose bath along the whole lung volume. There are limitations due to motion uh, management, like gradient effect, uh, especially owing to the uh, sleeve dose fall uh, effect of IMRT and interplay effect. And there's also no randomized data uh, between IMRT and CDCRT. So regarding the sequential and concurrent chemotherapy, we had shown the evidence uh, of CTRT versus RT in sequential setting. So uh, there is an analysis by uh, Operin et al. where they had uh, analyzed all these studies with sequential versus concurrent uh, chemotherapy uh, modalities where CTRT increased overall survival uh, in with respect to sequential chemotherapy modality along with this uh, acute physical toxicity which is manageable. Now uh, induction chemotherapy before CTRT has not Improved uh, uh, you know, any oncological outcome in this trial DB3901 study. However, induction chemotherapy can be opted in large volume disease in order to achieve a uh, dosimetric uh, goal in uh, radical CTRT settings. So, now coming to the optimal chemotherapy agent, so generally two chemotherapy agents are uh, particularly used in NSCLC, which is cystadine intoxide and carboplatin peptidaxels. We have to remember that. Fatty carbo uh, increases the radiation pneumonitis and the eutrophocyte uh, cisplatin arm is uh, is associated with increased grade three fragilities. So patients baseline lung PFT uh, uh, PFT values and PFT parameters should be kept in mind uh, while choosing this optimal uh, chemotherapy. And there is no statistically different uh, medial survival uh, in this study. By uh, in publishing is more uh, between these two uh, chemotherapy, although etoposite uh, cisplatin uh, was significantly higher, uh, the result is significantly higher OS. So, further adjuvant therapy in locally advanced NSCLC by immunotherapy like PDL1 blocker, uh, um, Durvalumab was uh, studied in this landmark where the patient treated with CTRT and no disease. Progression after CTRT received Dubamilab versus placebo for 12 months, and uh, it showed excellent uh, improvement in median oral survival and median PFS with other ratio of in OS is 0.7 and 0.55 in PFS. So now uh, Dubamilab, as it provided benefit in uh, overall survival and PFS, irrespective of sex histology and uh, in, in any other uh, mutation status, it should be considered at as standard of care. So in, to uh, summarize undeceptable uh, NSCLC, so chemotherapy, concurrent chemotherapy strategy should be preferred. Optimal chemotherapy uh, is, uh, should be open to a discussion. Randomized evidence-based support uh, to a dose, total dose of 60 gray, two gray daily sections with concurrent chemotherapy. 
sequential chemo radiation and radiation alone should be option in only poor ps and poor pft uh, uh, patients and adjuvant dubamab should be standard of care although there is a question of affordability so we can get the g you can read the gtp ctv and the contouring uh, guideline from this uh, guideline from istro acrop and uh, this uh, those constant uh, uh, should be followed in uh, like uh, assessing the uh, rt planning in nclc patient and all these patients should be follow up followed up with uh, advice of uh, smoking cessation uh, pharmacotherapy and proper counseling and uh, 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 remedies for the lung function so according to nccn uh, chase ct along uh, plasminder contour should be done every two every six months for two years uh, all the paid ct uh, is good uh, marker for tumor response it is not mandatorily indicated and at follow up we should monitor for uh, acute toxicities like esophagitis phytic and radiation pneumonitis just to mention a few words for radiation pneumonitis is presence uh, like 6 weeks to 3 months or 6 months after completion of rt lower low of lung uh, tumor age more than 65 and pectic arvo arrangements are uh, associated more with radiation pneumonitis it generally is managed with uh, steroids like prednisolone and uh, it generally improves uh, after Uh, like in uh, after up to 18 months and like to be improved after 8 months so, uh, thank you so much uh, you presented the case very well and discussion plus one point you only talked about radical rt and rad ct rt or post operative is there any case of locally advanced lung cancer where you will give only palliative radiotherapy Yes, if the patient, so if the patient is not fit, so the patients where you would not give sixty gray, and you might just give some palliative regimen. So and their patient doesn't have distant metastasis on PET CT, but locally advanced. Yes, sir. the patient with poor, very poor PFT and uh, uh, very poor uh, reserve lung reserve function. Uh, we. Uh, So, yes sir. poor lung reserve when you feel that treating that large volume would uh, cause made him a make him a respiratory trouble that is one thing so in this patient now uh, maybe the gr3 uh, can answer so you have a patient non metastatic uh, but locally advanced non small cell lung cancer and has a very poor pulmonary reserve and you in your judgment if you treat the primary tumor and the lymph nodes with margin the patient may you know not tolerate it patient may have severe uh, radiation pneumonitis what would you irradiate so we need see the primary tumor the primary the one which is causing the symptoms if there is any symptom we irradiate only uh, okay. for symptomatic purpose only if And the patient those scratch <laughs> in that setting because that is something which was not discussed just for completion sake i want to bring it up what dose fractionation In, sir we can give 13 in 10 or 25 in 5 hypofractionated rt we can do sir with a um, no, few fractions can lymph nodes ever cause any symptoms can lymph nodes in uh, lung cancer cause any symptoms yes sir uh, mediastinal lymph node can cause ca obstructive symptoms or uh, compressive symptoms good, good. uh anil uh, would you like to add anything to a good seminar excellent uh, uh, So no sir um it's, it's a very good uh, yeah thing that someone has discussed all the evidences but not in detail obviously because of the time constraint he time. has done well no. he has done well the only thing that i wanted to just emphasize on one more point that you have asked is there are there any indication for palliative radiotherapy in stage 3 non small cell lung cancer yeah. yeah even if the patient is not symptomatic mm -hmm. there are studies which have suggested that especially in the centrally obstructive area if there are lymph node or the primary mass there then there is a scope for example for poor compliance patient when they do not have any compliance when you know that the patient is not going to come back or has have difficulty in getting back to the hospital yeah. then you can pre empirically yeah. can treat the mediastinal area or the primary lung mass to a dose of 17 grain to fraction or 20 in 5 or 13 in whatever is the best modality that the institution is using so there is a scope for that particular indication also yeah you are right when you know it is only impending the symptoms and patient may not come back and come back with a frank svco 
Yes, sir. Okay. So I think next week we will discuss. Uh, we, we thought we'll cover lung cancer in three, but metastatic lung cancer and the different uh, you know driver mutations that we will discuss next week. And the last one would be in one we will cover small to lung cancer. So there will be four on lung cancer we will complete. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Bye -bye. Thank you, sir. Bye -bye. Thank you, sir.